Hi, I'm Adam Johns from the Chicago Sun-Times, and I'm joined here as always by Mark Potash. Mark, another edition of the Bears Video Mailbag here. This is from Daryl Conrad on Twitter. Is there a win total Trustman needs to reach to keep his job? An uninspiring win against the Vikings did not do it for Mr. Conrad. Then. No, we're all guessing at what it would take. And, you know, the funny thing is at, at Hallis Hall, you never know what they're thinking. Jerry Angelo was fired out of the blue. That was a stunner. Uh, so you just never know. And, and there have been times where you think Lovey was going to be gone, and, and he wasn't, and he stayed until the very end, obviously. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, some people think uh, six wins, um, anything less than six wins, would almost command a, a, a coaching change. But you never know how they think it at Hell's Hall. You really can't say. If this were year four or five or six, then I think you could put a number on it because even then, they, you know, at that point, they would have to you know, feel the heat. But in year two... Uh, with two years left on his contract, you got to keep that in, into consideration. And the fact that if they show some semblance, just like uh, against the Vikings, of getting back on their feet, that's all the, that's the, all the encouragement they need at Hal's Hall to not make a change. It's going to take something pretty disastrous, a continuation of what you saw against the Patriots and the Packers for there to be real change at Hal's Hall. I'll make two quick points. Uh, Mark Trestman is very much linked to the future of Jake Cutler. I mean, That's Jake Cutler point. was involved in the hiring of Mark Trestman, and Jake Cutler still has two years left on, on his deal. And number two, quickly, the Bears are still repeating his messages. They're actually still quoting him. So mm -hmm. that's a sign to me, and if you talk to a lot of veteran players, that they're not tuning him out yet, that some guys are still buying it. Maybe not all guys are buying it. I don't believe in that thing where, where, where everybody has to buy into a coach. That just doesn't happen. It's not reality. But a lot of players, a lot of players who meet the media are still repeating what he says. All right, let's, let's, keep, let's stay in the offense here. And a lot of questions uh, this week about trading Jay Cutler. This is from Carter Evans. This is the most direct one there was. You know, of course, a lot of people are going to pile on, on Cutler as they always do. Do you think they will trade Cutler before next season? No, I don't. I don't think so. For one thing, the, the, the only way they're going to trade Cutler is if they have a coaching change. Because the thinking would be, if, if you make a coaching change, you're not going to want to subject Jay Cutler, of all people, to another offense after all he's been through in Chicago. Even that scenario would be difficult. And you got to remember, there's going to be a cap hit no matter what uh, when they, if, if they were to trade Jay Cutler. So uh, I, I, I just don't see it happening. I think they're just going to more or less, they're more likely to double down and say, uh, we still believe in him because he really hasn't been as big a problem. I, I know that's kind of tough for people to take, but he's actually playing fairly well. And I've said all along, and I, and I still say it, I think uh, Sunday's game was a good example. They just need to give him a little more margin for error than he's had and allow him to make a mistake or two and not expect him to be perfect. And then he's actually a pretty good quarterback. All right, we have an off-season question from Nick Burke 9. The biggest need for the Bears in the off-season has to be defense, right? Right? He shudders a little bit, I guess, at his question. Oh, oh absolutely. I think it's important that, that they give Jay Cutler uh, room for error, and you, you can do that by playing defense like they did Sunday against the Vikings. He was able to withstand that because they played good defense. Now, they're not going to face Teddy Bridgewater all the time, but uh, the fact of the matter is they need to build a defense uh, that can stop even the good quarterbacks and, and give the offense a chance to win games. So I don't think there's any question where on the defense. That'll be an interesting question because uh, – you know, their linebackers are kind of in between, you know. They kind of believe in them, but yet they really haven't proven anything. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think that's where they go. Their defensive backfield is not set. Fuller hasn't even made the progress we thought he'd make after after two or three games early in the season. It's hard to explain exactly and where they'll go and what they'll do. If I had to pick one position, I know everybody says safety um, for, for the variety of reasons. I, I think the Bears need a good young pass rusher, and they, and they should draft uh, one this, this coming year We're in, in the high rounds, first or second rounds. We, we know Jerry Allen can, can come back. We know Lamar Houston, he's coming off a torn ACL. Billy Young has been brilliant this year, just had another sack against the Vikings. But you need some youth on, on the edge there to, to really pressure quarterbacks because that's really the name of the game is getting after quarterbacks, and the Bears just haven't been consistent enough at that this year. We have a question from Joe Madden from Twitter. I, I'm not sure if this is the, the Cubs manager, the new manager or not, but if they win their next two games, can they make a run to the playoffs? So we got an optimistic question from uh, Joe Madden here. Well, Adam, I always say uh, never underestimate the parity and mediocrity of the NFL. Anything is possible. 
uh, the Atlanta Falcons, a team the Bears beat pretty well, I think, in Atlanta. <laughs> They're in first place. They're in the playoffs right now. The Buccaneers the are Buccane back in the playoffs. The race. Buccaneers yeah. are closer to the playoffs than the Bears are right now because they're in that division. Anything is possible. The Bears still have a good team. They get on their feet. I I'm not saying it's going to happen. I would, I would say it probably will not happen. But can it happen? I don't think it's, I don't think it's the pipe dream that a lot of naysayers would I mean, would teams say. have gone from 3-6 and six to 10-6, and 3-5 and five to 10-6, and six and made the playoff playoffs. It's, it's hasn't. Not happened. It's and, happened actually recently. And the point is, the current environment of the NFL leads you to believe. If it were some other team, you'd believe it. But Bears fans are so used to their team not coming through, they can't believe it. But and look at the teams the Bears are playing. The Lions are in first place, but they're a dysfunctional. They've been a dysfunctional team that is self-destructed and always, you know, hands Rounds victories to the Bears. Yeah. The Cowboys are the same way with Tony Romo. Uh, the Saints never win in the cold in Chicago. Uh, the Buccaneers are two and eight. There's a, you can find reasons for them to win every single game they play the rest of the year. Well, we'll leave on this semi-positive note. He's go. Mark Potash. I'm Adam Johns. Tweet at us if you have any questions for the Bears video mailbag. Thanks for watching, and stay with SunTimes.com for all our Bears coverage.